Hello and welcome back. Today, we're gonna finish working on the riser slash dampener feet for my CR6SE. I was finally able to order some flexible filament, so I'm ready to get these going. Now I chose this particular Pryline TPU for two reasons. It's inexpensive, and it's more on the rigid side than something like NinjaFlex. But I've used it before and I really like it. However, a word of warning, the first time I purchased this brand, the roll that was delivered had moisture in it, as you can see from these pictures. That's not a huge problem for me, as I already have a modified food dehydrator for my filament, so I could just pop it in there for about an hour. So just keep in mind, if your prints look anything like the picture on the left, the roll needs to be dehydrated. But I did let the company know, and they sent me a replacement roll free of charge. So you could just request a return or exchange, because although I know sometimes things happen, you shouldn't have to accept a brand new roll of filament that you already have to dehydrate right out of the box. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's move on. So here's a quick look at my dry box setup. If you remember me mentioning purchasing the Bowden style tubing and fittings kit in my custom filament guide video, that's the dry box I was talking about that I purchased those for. And let me know if you want to see a video of me building this box with a list of the parts and whatnot. I have all the stuff here so I could easily make another video with a step-by-step -step guide. Okay, so these are the current feet I have on the CR6. I had originally designed the red portion of these to work with the Ender 3 and some of the packing foam from the shipping box that it came in. After I realized the foam was squishing over time, I designed the black part to be printed in TPU to take place of the foam as the dampener. Then when I wanted the feet to work on my CR6, I added the blue part that would slide in between the railing on the top of the red part and over the existing pads that come on the bottom of the printer. And that was good enough until I was able to order some more TPU, but it's not visually pleasing by any means. So let's jump into Tinkercad and finish up designing those feet I had mentioned several videos ago. Alright, so in Tinkercad you can see this isn't my first design for these feet. Don't pay attention to this weird looking yellowish one. I was trying to play with the stabilization by adding that extra bit to the very bottom, but I eventually decided it's not necessary. So I'm working with my original design from ages ago, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with it as it is, but I wanted to slim it down some and make it taller because it's just too short. So I'm going to add about 12 millimeters to the height, and then I'm going to slim it down some. I'll be quiet and let you watch this. I'll only speed it up a little bit so you can see the steps because it really didn't take that long at all. I think that looks good. Let's export it and jump over into Cura and I'll show you my settings. So I want to mention first off that I dropped the end fill to 10% so I could still get that squishy feel for better dampening.
Now, I'm sure you all know who Chuck Hellebuck is, or Chep, as I refer to him. I grabbed his NinjaFlex profile that he made for the Ender 3, which works well with the Pryline filament with just a couple tweaks. You can get his profiles for free from his website, and if you don't know who he is, I highly recommend checking him out. Very informative. Search for Chep, C-H-E-P, on YouTube, and his videos should pop up. Okay, so I'm not putting on any supports as you can see, and like I said, the infill is at 10%. And then the rest, I'm pretty sure, is besides my temperature, is all Chuck's profile settings. Okay, so let's jump into a time lapse of one of these printing and we'll see how well it turned out. And just to note, I tried leaving the blue LED light on through this time lapse just to see how well it would turn out. I thought it would brighten it up, but uh, yeah, Creality, um, why blue? Why not a white LED? Is it just me or does this not make sense to anyone else? Anyway, So here we go. I think they look pretty good. And they do a perfect job of dampening and raising the printer, so I still have that room underneath for whatever I need to store away down there. I'm going to leave you here, but tell me your thoughts. What do you think of these? Are you going to print them? And if you do, go ahead and leave a make on Thingiverse. Okay, as always, links will be in the description. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, have the best day ever. Yeah.